Hi guys! Happy Friday! It's Tabitha here with McHarper Manor. I have my son Abbott with me today. He is so pumped to be here. Aren't you, bud? Yeah. He is happy, though. <laughs> He's so just excited. your typical 12-year-old kid who, uh, you know, isn't going to show much enthusiasm about these things. But I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited, too. Today, we are back for week three project five and we are going to be making some little sweet sculptures we're going to make some little cakes and stuff today so we're going to use our model magic you guys use whatever you have but we are going to show you with some model magic that we have here so how's everybody doing today i hope you guys are having a great friday great week great afternoon um how are you ab good good yeah he's a man of many words how are you feeling tom I'm yeah, feeling good today. Good. Missy? I'm feeling good. Good. How are you guys out there? Anybody tuning in for day 15? We do. You already have Micah and Kaylee. Yeah. Day 15. Um, looks like the Holinka family. Joy and Emily again. Mason and nice, Jen. Nice, guys. Lots of, lots of day 15ers already hopped on. Welcome back. So we did put up the week five and six supply list last night, the project list. That's going to be kind of an amended week. They're going to be shortened weeks. Week five will be going live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Week six, we will be going live on Tuesday and Thursday. So beginning after that, we will be launching our membership site. So there will be more details coming um, from that in the coming weeks, but you will have two more weeks of content added to the end of this. So we thank you guys so much for sticking with us. We're going to try to do our best to make it really good content and make it, you know, affordable and awesome for everybody. So we're excited to roll that out for you soon. You can check out the supply list and projects for weeks five and six on the blog. That's mcharpermanor.com and you can click under the art video resources or you can just type in mcharpermanor.com slash blog and that'll take you straight to the list for all the supplies. So we were so excited to see all of your guys's creations from yesterday the still life were looking awesome we hope you guys enjoyed that process i was really impressed with you guys with your results you guys did really really good jobs so thanks for sharing those with us again if you want to share any other creations or today's creations use that hashtag made with mcharper and that's how we see what you've made and that's also how we choose our people that win our fun weekly surprises so this week we we have our little sloth from the Happy Groundhog Studio. Missy has provided this little sloth for us. And we have our Creativity Takes Courage t-shirt. Um, and that's going to go to one of the winners, too. It's the same one I'm wearing today. So even if, you know, we choose somebody that that's not their favorite style, moms, dads, anybody who wants to wear this one can wear it, too. So that's the fun. So keep sharing those hashtags. Made with Mick Harper. So you ready to make some cakes? All right. You guys excited to make some cakes? Has anybody been having any really super awesome desserts out there lately? We are not bakers so much in this family. Um, Tom is good at making cookies, but um, we also like to make brownies, but not cakes so much. So this is, this is about the extent of the cakes that we make here. Anybody making any fun desserts while they're on lockdown, raiding the pantry, using all the flour and baking soda and baking powder, things of that nature. <laughs> All right. Today, the supplies you're going to need. Um, some model magic, if you have it. If you don't have it, you can use um, something like Sculpey. Um, you can also use Play-Doh, any clay, whatever you have that you want to use um, just to make with us. So Play-Doh isn't going to isn't gonna look the same, and it's also gonna crack when it dries. That might just be something fun to play and make with us. Uh, Sculpey is going to be something that you are going to want to keep thin. So I'm gonna show you guys a technique here in a minute of how to make like a little hockey puck to go inside these guys. If you're using Sculpey, it's gonna help you to keep that like quarter inch um, 
layer of Sculpey around the outside of it so that it bakes and it doesn't scorch, doesn't burn. Um, also, I'm going to show you guys for the Model Magic how to use it too because it helps you really stretch your Model Magic. Um, that way you don't have to use a whole brick of it. You can just roll up some aluminum foil. So I know I didn't have that on the supply list, but it was just a thought. Um, I know a lot of people were using Sculpey from last week's um, supply list, so I thought it would be a fun way to show you. So I've got some aluminum foil here too to show you guys. I also have just a little rolling pin, which you know you could also use any kind of like you could use a bottle, you could use the old hairspray trick that we talked about um, previously, but anything that's a cylinder that you can kind of roll out with, you're definitely want, gonna want something to roll with today because we're gonna use our clay kind of like fondant and we're just gonna like drape it over or we're gonna roll it into a little puck for our little cakes. Anything else? Uh, some tools, tools if you have them. Um, toothpicks, chopsticks, anything like that works great. You might just wanna use something with a little point to make those little eyes and little mouth cute things if you're gonna give your works of art a face. So, yeah. How are we doing out there, miss? Good, everybody is making me hungry. They're making <laughs> brownies in a mug. They're making Ooh. macaroons. Macaroons? Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys. Sundays and peanut butter chocolate truffles. Oh my goodness. Strawberries dipped in some cheese. S'mores. Oh my great. gosh. The Girl Scout virtual campout. Oh my gosh, there's a Girl Scout so, virtual campout? Yeah. Oh, I need to do that with my troop. <laughs> to get my girls on board we're gonna have abbott has requested a bonfire with s'mores tomorrow night so that's what we'll be doing at our house we're what else are, that too. yeah are you guys doing that yeah. too I'm yeah sure. so we're gonna do a little right. a little fire outside and we're gonna have uh s'mores and i think what what game you requested another board game are we going to clue I don't know. We have a stack of board games that we've been going through. So we might finish that Monopoly that's been, everybody's got their, their pieces and their properties sandwich bagged up so that we can resume because we've already got two and a half hours invested in it. And it's probably going to take two more. Like Monopoly at our house is like risk. It's like you clear off a table and it sits there for days and everybody comes back to it because we have so, we have six people in our family and everybody's so invested in it. It takes forever. So all right, so if you want to make a little hockey puck for your cake, for the center of your cake, this is just gonna stretch your Model Magic a little bit further. And if you're using Sculpey, it's definitely what you're gonna wanna use for the inside. So when we make armatures or anything for any kind of um, clay things or paper mache or anything like that, I usually start with aluminum foil. It's really super easy to, um, condense down and you still have a little bit of ability to work with it. A note of caution is if you push it really hard, it's you're not going to have as much wiggle room. So kind of just start to shape it in the way that you want to shape it, okay? So if I'm making a little hockey puck, I'm going to kind of start to put him into a ball, right? So you wouldn't as much fold it over as just kind of like scrunch it a little bit together because if you fold it, you're just making sheets. Yeah. So just kind of start to fold it together. And if you don't have aluminum foil and you're not doing this part, don't worry about it at all. This is just an extra step, an extra um, process for people that are trying to use Sculpey or want to stretch clay for multiple kids and multiple projects. So I just like to take that and I kind of like push it down and kind of flatten them out a little bit flatten them out a little bit and then just kind of roll it and use your hands to kind of roll him into like and don't push way too hard you're just going to use repetition to kind of get it in there if you push too hard it'll turn into like a super hard little puck like this guy and that's and that's what you do eventually want it to but you really want to get it into the shape you like first once you get down to this part it's really to this you know this dense of a ball of aluminum foil, it's really hard to make any changes to the shape. So that's kind of like finalizing it. But while it's like this, you can really kind of like crunch them down and make them the way you want. So that looks like kind of how I want it to be. And then I'm just gonna kind of push on this side to even it out and continue rolling and just kind of make a little puck. So everybody, um, appreciating or liking the fact that I'm giving you this option. I hope it, it doesn't make people feel like you have to do this. It's just kind of one of those 
It's a bonus. We'll call it a bonus, okay? But yeah, there's my hockey puck. And I've got two hockey pucks now because I might do a two-tiered cake. All right, so hockey puck aside, I'm going to take my first color of clay. So I'm starting with like a little turquoise color. And you can mix colors too, guys. Um, real quick, let's mix a color. If you want, say this color is a little bright or Abbott and I both wanted to use this color and we didn't have a ton of it, um, we would just take this little bit and add it with maybe some white. So are you going with gray? Yeah. I've already got some gray ready for you over here. We want to keep black. some of the, yeah, keep some of the black for the eyes and stuff. Again, with two people using the same supply of clay, we're gonna have to, you know, mix some things and, and share. If you guys have multiple kids or multiple people, uh, multiple projects, you're gonna wanna thin some of this out too. Um, but I just start with whatever color I'm mixing. You will notice that if you bought some of the other um, brands that I suggested, the the Crayola Model Magic brand is a little bit tougher. Um, it dries out a little quicker, so I like to add this other brand with it and kind of mix them. What are you guys cracking up about over there? He's potatoing. Oh, you are know. you potatoing already? <laughs> Potate, Potate the great is... is... Add it again. Yeah. And then as a reminder, you can, if you just have white, you can. Yeah, you can use just white. And you can, you can use um, marker over top of it. You can add a little bit of acrylic paint into it. You can add watercolor into it. You can, you can dye the white. I like to add, um, I, I actually like to like use uh, even Crayola markers just over the over the top of it. It's really absorbent. It sucks it in. You can use Sharpies too. Um, but yeah, you can add a little bit of acrylic paint in there and mix it up. You can experiment, guys. Play with it. What's the worst that can happen? It doesn't turn out exactly like you hoped and we have to pivot. Pivot! <laughs> hey, Christina's got a good tip for all of us doing bonfires. Yeah. This weekend. She, they're also doing a constellation watch, so that counts as schoolwork. Ooh, oh, yeah. Astronomy, guys. Science. All right. But, yeah, the Crayola Model Magic is a little bit more dry, so I keep it in a Ziploc, and I keep it zipped when I'm not using it. It dries out a little bit quicker. All right, so that's how we're mixing colors. Just pull it apart, throw your other color in there, flop it back over. It's kind of like salt water taffy, you know, when you watch those little machines make it. Mix it up, pull it, and do that. All right, so let's start with, I'm going to start with this bigger, the bigger guy on bottom is going to be my larger base cake. I'm going to do a two-tiered cake. So I'm going to take my, I would say this ball of clay would be probably like two inches in diameter, just a, a little chunk, and I'm going to roll him out, Okay. And it's kind of like fondant. Has anybody out there ever worked with fondant before and made a cake? Okay. Yeah, honey. There you go. Like tiny cake decorations. Tiny <laughs> cakes. This is one of our favorite summer camps. Kids love making these little cakes with us. My little sheets sliding around here when I <laughs> try to roll it out. You want to roll it out kind of thin to where it'll cover the cake, but you don't want to go like paper thin. You want to have a little bit of thickness to it because this is kind of chunky and lumpy. So this is going to cover him. So I'm going to just lay him over and I'm going to kind of pop this down. And I'm just going to kind of wrap it around. And on the bottom, I'm going to kind of seam it together. So again, once you've made that, once you've rolled it out flat like a pancake, we're just gonna cover our little hockey puck and we're gonna roll that down. Now, I will show you if you don't have aluminum foil, if you are not using aluminum foil, if you're just using Model Magic, this is how we're gonna do it. And this is also how we make s'mores, how we make our little marshmallow for our little, um, our little clay s'mores that we do here in the studio too. You wanna to start with a ball, okay? And get as much of these, you know, little seams out as you can. Make your ball, 
and just roll and roll and roll. And again, this is if you don't have a little hockey puck center and you're just using your clay. And then I want you to take that ball and I want you to roll it on its side and make him like the chubbiest little nugget of a log. Like a potato. Yeah, we have some somebody new here today that doesn't understand what the, why the potato keeps popping Oh my up. gosh, guys. Because everything starts with a potato in my world. That's why everything starts with a potato. You've got to go back and watch some other videos and you will appreciate the potato. Potate the Great is our coloring challenge for the weekend. Maybe not coloring, maybe decorating, maybe collaging. Maybe you cut potato out and throw him or her in one of your paintings that you've done. But th this is our weekly challenge. There's um, already a lot of good ones out there. Yeah, there's some good ones. I saw, I saw a unicorn. Somebody turned potato into a unicorn. So once you, once you roll your little chubby log, it's, it's like a little mini corn dog at this point. <laughs> Roll them and then just kind of pat it down and then flip it over and pat it down. Okay, and then you're roll it again. It's just a process. Okay, roll it again and then pat it down and flip it over and pat it down. Roll it. Ab, did you want to say hi to anybody? You've got you've got a friend out there watching today, don't you? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to say hi, Will? Yeah, what's up, bro? Hi, Will. <laughs> so yeah, you're you're just making a little a little puck. Would you say, babe? I said I messed up. That's okay. You Maybe it's a, icing. You got a lot of young budding bakers out there that are yes. really excited to be decorating little cakes. Yes, America's next great baker or sculptor, whatever you prefer. Okay, so this would be if we just made a little hockey puck guy. So. I mean, this is so sweet. You don't have to have the inside guy. This is just making it without. So if you are simply working with the model magic, that's a perfect way to make them. Um, you can also make little marshmallows and things that way. When we cut out a little piece of the, the foam squares, um, the little brown wheel will take some a Sharpie and make some dots on it and make them look like a graham cracker and sit them on top and put a little squares of chocolate on them. Those are super cute too. But um, if we're making our cake and we've got, say we've got two layers of our cake now, we can, um, we can put some more icing on top of this guy. So maybe I want chocolate icing for this guy. And I want you guys to really just play and make little cakes and have fun with it. There's no right or wrong with these. You can be making big cakes, little petit fours. You could be making little tiny, it's okay, you can sit him down. Little teeny tiny um, donuts. This is like the cutest guy. Are you overhead, Tom? Can you see the little donut man? Mm -hmm. He's so sweet. Did you have a sample of your s'mores somewhere? You know, my s'more, I don't know where he is. Yeah, I, I think, think I saw him. Somebody yeah, see him, but... I know. Maybe I'll find a picture of him and I can throw him up later. We have so many um, examples from all the classes and camps that we do here that it's like we have a shelf. Um, I'll take a picture of, a sh of the shelf sometime and show you. But we have a shelf where we keep our demos and it gets so overrun that we have to like clear them out and change to new demos. So the you know he's not up there right now but they're super fun they're super cute um oh, Abbott. Abbott. Says hi. yeah I was gonna say cameron, cameron. oh cameron. hey cam <laughs> i've loved seeing all of the barclays art over the past few weeks you guys are rock stars you guys have like done every project every day <laughs> clay and cynthia you guys are killing it with these kids you've got a serious agenda serious uh schedule out there for them i love it all right so i am going to roll out some chocolate icing for this guy some of our friends are making theirs for their american girl dolls yes yes i love it so that's what um that's one of the things with the miniatures that we do these little cakes are perfect size for american girl dolls i mean Goodness, they're adorable. All right, so if I was making a little bit of icing for this guy, I would just want to put it over the top and make sure that it kind of covers around here 
um, that it's it's big enough to cover the circumference of this guy. Um, you know, I kind of like it wobbly. Like I like it a little bit wonky. I don't like it to be um, a perfect circle. Yours might be a perfect circle, but mine's a little lumpy because I want it to look like real icing. So I'm just going to sit that right on top and I'm going to kind of press that down and I am going to just lay it over the edge and just let it kind of do its thing. And it kind of looks like Kind of looks like icing dripping over the edge, I think. It's making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> just stomach growling again. Stomach yeah. growling over here. <laughs> I really, I really like when they look. Smelling like carbs, I'm going to be around. Yeah. <laughs> Fake carbs. <laughs> so yeah, now I've made this cute little chocolate layer to him. Ab, yours is great. You did you? Oh. Do you want to show everybody yours? Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I love his rainbow sprinkles. He's so fun. So Abbott's is on a little hockey puck guy, and you can see that there's a little bit of air between there. That's okay. He's just going to dry like that. I love it, buddy. He's awesome. You want to make another thing? You want to make a donut? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, make a donut. We'll be able to show everybody that. Okay, so I've got my little, my first layer, and I want to go ahead and put, I'm going to save this hockey puck to the side. Um, is there more tin foil I can use? Yeah. There you go, bud. So I want to make my next layer. Let's go purple. Or you know what? We'll go orange. We'll go bright. I'm going to make an orange. A nice orange second layer. And I'm going to use this little hockey puck that I've got going on over here. Rachel's Rachel making little treats for her peg dolls. Oh, yay! Yeah, and if you want, I got a bunch of if you have too much, yeah, if that's too much, you can just kind of un unroll it and tear unroll it, it and <laughs> tear it off like that. There you go, bud. I think he's making a, a loop for his donut. And the donut, if it's a small donut, it might be more of a pain than it's worth to make an armature for him, so you just, you do you. So I'm mixing up some orange here to make my second layer. And I'm just pulling the orange, and the white through it. To make the tiny treats for the little peg dolls, oh my gosh, those take a lot, those would be so small and take so much skill. So I'm impressed. I can't wait to see how tiny and intricate your little, your little uh, treats are. Okay, so now I've got my orange. Pretty, pretty solid. I don't see a lot of streaking through there anymore. So I'm going to just roll it kind of into a ball try to keep the try to keep the cracks and seams out of it so I can get it nice and smooth and then I'm going to roll them you can see my little air bubbles coming through Now, if you have cookie cutters at home, um, like little circle biscuit cutters or anything like that, you can use those too for that. Um, they help to make it a really nice circle for if you're putting it over the little puck. Okay. Missy, do we have any parents excited for date night tonight out there? Oh yeah, everybody's excited. Oh, good. <laughs> Guys, I need this yes. deeply. So we're going to have Sean on, Missy's husband. Um, he will be playing some music for us starting at 8.30. And then we'll switch it over to the project around 9. And we really, really hope you guys enjoy a little happy hour with him and dig some of his tunes. He's so good. He's such a talented guitar player and artist. So I think it'll just be the relaxation we all need, <laughs> right? 
so again, I'm just taking my little layer, my little orange layer that I've made, and I'm putting it over top of this little hockey puck. This particular one, I feel like it got really thin in some areas, so I could rip that off, or I could just put another layer on. I think I might just beef it up and throw one more layer on. If you get really thin in some spots and you just want to smooth it out more, just throw another layer on or rip it off and start over. I'm just going to do one more thin layer because I have so much of that color. And that can really cover up any spots that are super wonky or starting to kind of tear through. That aluminum foil can be sharp, so I'm just going to wrap them one more time. And that smooths them out a little bit. And then I can even just take my little take my little knife around the bottom and cut that edge off like you would with real fondant. I'm just kind of take them down and cut that edge. A couple questions about date night. Do you want to tell them where to find all the information? Yeah, so date night. You can find all the info for date night tonight on... Um, we have this morning's post with Sean on it. Um, I'm going to have another post tonight or this evening at 4 that will give you all the details. But you can go straight to the blog right now, which is mcharpermanor.com, and click under those art and video resources or type in mcharpermanor.com slash blog. And you can click on date nights at home with McHarper Manor, and that will take you to all the info for tonight's date night. If you are just now joining us for like your first day, I know we have some first timers out there and you didn't have time to get the supplies, you can always catch the replay on um, YouTube. Get the supplies, wait till the kids are in bed and do this for yourself. We just really wanted to offer something for the parents out there, the caretakers, um, and, and not you don't even have to have a kid, just somebody that needs um, to refill their cup and just really enjoy a process together. So I want you guys to um, just enjoy this enjoy this fun activity that is specifically designed for adults. So we did have a question yesterday, like, can kids do this? Um, you can definitely teach your kids to do this. Tonight, it's going to be Tom and I and Missy and Sean talking, you know, as parents. So it might not be, you know, something that you definitely want to watch with your kids. You know, Tom's going to have a drink. I'm going to have a drink. We're going to be adults. We're going to be parents here together. And we're going to talk maybe candidly about some things. So I wouldn't call it necessarily adult program, but it may not have the same may not have the same um, kid vibe as our normal programming, but we want you guys to, you know, uh, enjoy yourselves as well. So, yeah, check all that stuff out on the blog and get your supplies and join us if you can tonight. It'll start at 8.30 um, with Sean's little mini happy hour, and then at 9 we'll be back um, with the project starting. So now that I've made my little top cake, I'm just going to pop him on top of there. Do you have a tip for uh, one of our friends that... It's maybe having a little trouble with the clay sticking to the foil. Sticking to the foil? Like it's not sticking to the I foil? Think so. so if it's not sticking to the foil, that's normal. We're just wrapping the foil with the clay. You're always going to have like where I showed Abbott's, you're going to have some, some little air pockets in there, and that's okay. Um, we're just making like a little form for him. Um, the more you kind of like roll that clay on there and press it, the the more it will be closer to the foil. But if there are little air pockets, that's okay. The way we can combat that is to kind of pull it around at the bottom and kind of pinch it together and seam it together so that it really just creates a little space in there for him. But yeah, don't be don't be too stressed about that. All right, so maybe we're making this a three-tier cake. I love these colors together. Maybe he's a three-tier cake. I love him. Should we? Yeah, we should give him some icing too. What color icing should the yellow, the orange guy get? Purple? Sure. Sure. I just kind of chose for you, didn't I? How's your uh, donut coming? Abbott's made a donut. Yeah. Did you guys see Abbott's donut? Did you give him a face yet? No. He's super cute. Super, super cute. And this is just a fun one, guys. I hope you are having fun with it, making fun things. I'm gonna roll out a little bit of this purple and put some purple icing on this little cake. So 
So I'm going to see, he's way too big, so maybe I'll cut some of that off. Okay, so he's kind of, you know, he's wonky and cute, and I like, I like the shape of him. So I'm going to throw him on there and just give him a nice little layer of icing. This would be like a... Uh, Sweet 16 cake. This is pretty over the top. This is not what you would expect for a regular birthday or a regular Friday night, I don't think. How about you, Miss? Do you make three three layer cakes for your normal Fridays? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even buy three layer cakes. I know, right? <laughs> I am not a baker. Baker, I am not. Me either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Abbott. Abbott just brought up a really fun point. We did try to make a cake for Tom for his birthday in February. And um, has anybody ever seen that show on Netflix called Nailed It? That was one million percent what Nailed our cake it. looked like. It was the ugliest cake I've ever seen in my life. It was so bad. It was hilarious. Like we couldn't even... We couldn't even like be upset about it. It was so bad and so funny. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not good at baking. I'm not good at decorating cakes. Like just know your strengths, you know, <laughs> stick to what you're good at. <laughs> Try new things, um, enjoy it. We had fun, didn't we? We had fun baking it. It tasted okay. Yeah. yeah. We made our own icing and it was an adventure. That was for sure. <laughs> but yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give this last little layer some yellow icing. And then I wanna give this guy a face. Um, I don't know if I wanna give the top layer a face or the bottom. Who gets a face, Ab? Top layer or the bottom? The All bottom? Mm, somebody wants to know what All is three. yours and Abbott's favorite dessert? I oh, no idea. mine? is um easy mine's easy mine's cheesecake i am obsessed with cheesecake what's your favorite i don't really have one he doesn't really have one because he likes them all any dessert he can get <laughs> he is our um he's our like junk food guy he likes he eats really well but if he's like off of you know if he's if he's having a a day where he wants a treat he wants something like 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 from the gas station like nothing high class like, he like just... my dad <laughs> yeah true true story all right so here's my little cake so we have a lot of people asking um how to mix different colors do you have a tip maybe where they a resource where they could find yeah so mixing colors um you guys really are just gonna be taking little bits of you know the color or if you're looking for somewhere to learn how which colors make you know each other look at the color wheel across from each other red and yellow are going to make orange um blue and red are going to make violet so you're going to want to look at the color wheel but then just take some of your colors like if you have red and yellow make a little bit of orange if you want to make a lighter version of the yellow add some white to it if you want to make a darker version of yellow you can add something like if i wanted to go from a you know bright yellow to more of a mustard yellow. I would maybe add some brown to it, a touch of black, but you can tint these with white and black. You can mix the colors um, like reds and blues to make your own colors. Um, and before you mix the whole like pot, say I wanted to make, say I was learning to make red, you know, to make my own pink. Before I mixed the whole pot of red with the white, to figure out what shade, maybe take a teeny tiny pinch of white and a teeny tiny pinch of red to see if that's the pink that you're wanting to come up with. Try with a little and then make the bigger ball of clay that you'll need. All right, so I'm gonna put a face on this guy. So let's go with, I'm gonna take what would be, Abbott's stolen all my tools over here. I'm gonna give them each a little face. I think you're right. So let's use um you can also use a toothpick for this or one of these little one of these little tools but i'm gonna go and give him 
one eye dot there, one eye dot there, and then I'm just gonna give him a happy little, a little happy smile. So we have some beads over on the table, some little seed beads that we could add in to make eyeballs. I also like to take just a tiny little dot of black, teeny tiny, and you can kind of roll that up. Ooh, two little, you know, two little balls of the black. And I can drop that in there on that little eye hole that I made. Another little teeny tiny piece of black down in that one. And then if it doesn't seem like it's sticking, you can kind of take that toothpick or that tool again and kind of like stab them down in there. And then you'll have like a little happy face in there. Um, we could do, Abbott always likes the sad faces. So we could do a little sad face on the bottom. <laughs> and we'll give him a little, we'll give him a little eyeball over here and a little eyeball over here. And a little frown. If somebody wants to use Sharpie, maybe you suggest maybe they wait till they're... wait till it dries. You're gonna want to give this 48 hours to dry. Um, you'll be able to touch it and handle it, but it's still gonna be wiggly and move on you. Um, also, there's you know there's moisture inside this clay, so it's gonna take that pigment from your Sharpie and it's gonna like kind of like burst it out a little bit. Wait till it's completely dry. Um, and you know, you still may get a little bit of um, spreading from where your Sharpie ink is when you do it when it's dry too, because it is a porous clay. So just wait till, wait till it's dry and then add your Sharpie or marker on top. I'm gonna take this black, give him his eye over here. And then that one's a little big. Take another piece of black. Give him a little eyeball over here. Ooh, there he goes. But these are just fun, guys. Just have fun with it. They're so sweet and they're so, they're just so fun to make. So he's like, Mah. I'm so sad. He has a cool, he has a hairline. His hairline looks, he looks like Ab. <laughs> Check your hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's got a little bang swoop. He's like a, he's like the abbot of cakes. <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe he needs a candle. If you go, if you wanted to make a little candle on top, you can take um, two colors and mix them together, um, or twist them together. Not necessarily mix them. Let's twist them together um, to make a cool little candle. So I'll pick my second color. Maybe I'll use some of this turquoise again. And I want to take a little bit of white, a little bit of turquoise, and I'm going to make two coils, okay? Two little, well, he's not staying together very well, so I'm going to turn him into a ball and then turn him into a coil. And this stuff dries out pretty quickly when we're working with small pieces, so keep your lids on, keep them in Ziplocs. Um, we're going to roll him into a little coil. Do you have tips for people? Some people said that um, they left their Ziploc and they feel like maybe they're starting to dry out a little bit. Their Ziploc is starting to dry out a little bit? Yeah, the ones they had in the Ziploc. Squish um, out the air. I mean, squish, squish out the air. Yeah, definitely squish air the air can, out. Before you seal it. Yeah, before you seal them up, definitely squish the air out. You can, um, I mean, the more you work with it, the softer it's going to get too. So sometimes you can incorporate some of that moisture back in there. Um, I mean, maybe just Google how to reanimate. Um, you know, the Model Magic clay. Sometimes that helps. I know with the Sculpey, I can add a little bit of mineral oil in. So there may be a hack like that that you can find on Google. I personally keep ours in a Rubbermaid container, like a little storage container. I put them individually in Ziplocs with all the air out of them and zip them tight so that they stay really nice and moist in there zip them tight, and then I put them again inside of a little Rubbermaid storage container so that no air is getting to them either. So that's how ours stay pretty nice and workable. <coughs> but, um, you know, you'll find what, what works best for you for storage. 
Audra would like you to know that this is so fun and you're bringing light to their family Aww. during this dark time. Yay! Thank you, Audra. I'm happy to help. So I've got my two coils, my turquoise and my white, and I'm going to lay them right next to each other, and then I'm just going to kind of twist them. I'm going to twist until it looks like a candle, right? So I'm just going to kind of twist it into like a little tube. And it's skidding around one end, and, I, and I'm going to probably chop that off, but I can take that, and I can just take my little... Take my little knife guy and chop the end off. And now it looks like a little candle. And I can pop that right on top. Ta-da! And there's that little candle. So if I wanted to add a little flame to it, I could just take a little, tiny little pinch of orange and kind of turn him into like a little raindrop looking guy. Again, just kind of pinch it a little flat, taper the top, kind of bell it out a little bit. Make it like what looks like a little raindrop and just attach him to the top. Sometimes with Model Magic, things like do fall apart over time. And um, if the, you know, if your little candle falls off or your little flame falls off the top of the candle, you can... Um, Take some super glue and pop him right back on top of there. But yeah. Kate wants to know if you can show how to make uh, the eyes like sleeping eyes. Like tired eyes? Yeah. So let me make a little face for you guys real quick. I'll make a little blank over here. So let's pretend that this is his little, this is my new little cake guy. All right, so here's his little face. I could take, um, you know, a toothpick and just kind of make them go down. It's almost like the mouth, okay? Just down like that. Down like that, okay? And then you could have a little mouth like that too. So you would just run you know, your toothpick or whatever across there. And you guys can see that's like a little sleepy eyes. Alternatively, you could, let me show you up here, we'll pretend like this is a surface too. You can kind of rub that clay to make it smooth out. You could do happy eyes, like the little, the little arc, like a rainbow arc, just little happy eyes like that and a little happy mouth too. So that would just be one little arc, one little arc, and a little happy mouth. He looks pretty happy. He's cute, he looks like the happy sumo. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe use a little, uh, like, a, like a straw too, like a plastic you could, straw. Yeah, you could take a plastic straw and you could like cut the edge to make a perfect little, um, little scoop thing that could make like a happy, like a little happy indentation too. So like this guy, he's a little scoop. He also makes a great mouth. So you can kind of see how you can just push that in there and it makes like a perfect little mouth. We use those tools too, quite a bit for these. Um, but yeah, you could just take the tip of a drinking straw and kind of cut with scissors, the cut it in half and then take that top piece off and make it a happy little circle, a semi-circle that would work perfectly too. You guys wanna make a donut? We've got time, you wanna make a donut? Yeah. Abbott's already made a donut, yeah. but. We can make a donut. We have a lot of requests for donuts. Yeah, let's make a donut. So yeah, on your cake, you can always take little um, sprinkles and put them on top of your cake. I'm gonna show you guys how to do sprinkles with this donut. Do you either wanna lay your cake down or put them out in front? So yeah. You can see them? Yeah. Tom, where's the best place for people to be able to see the cake? Should I put them out here? You could put them right out front. Right out front. <laughs> right out on Front Street. All right, so. To make a little donut guy, we're gonna start with some white and some brown. Um, you can use whatever colors you have because remember these are make-believe donuts. They don't have to look completely accurate. I'm gonna make a kind of like a cakey chocolate donut. 
Um, somebody's having trouble getting their candle to stick up. Could they use a toothpick? Maybe yeah, wrap? you could throw a toothpick in the center of it. You could take a toothpick and wrap him in um, the colors. The the candles are, I mean, even mine is a little floppy. The one that's dry, he was like a unicorn horn. He's kind of floppy too. I mean, we're working with what we've got. Continue to just kind of like prop him back up. And if you wanted to put a toothpick inside of it, you could do that too. You could wrap your colors around the outside of a toothpick, break it off and kind of stab them down in through the center. I think that's a great tip. Thanks, miss. Okay, so I'm making my cake donut color. And then I'm gonna incorporate all this brown and white together to make kind of a creamier brown, not so, not so dark. And because we like to stretch our colors, we like to we mute everything down a little bit because we add it all to white. Any any of the kids that play with Model Magic here in the studio can tell you, we uh, we usually thin it out with white. the The bright colors are more expensive than the white, so we that's how we we thin it out and we share the colors that way. So I've got my brown that I've made, and I'm just gonna make a little log. I'm gonna roll him into a little log. I'm gonna show you two ways to make a donut. You can make a log and then you can connect them like that but then you get that little seam so if you are not if you're not putting icing over the top sometimes that seam can be a little bit of a pain um, and you can always you know thin them out or just kind of spread them out with your fingers and but you do get that seam when you do it that way. Alternatively, the other way I like to make a donut is to take a ball and just make a perfect little ball of clay. And then I take something like either a chopstick or a drinking straw, anything like that. I take my perfect little ball and then I take whatever I have and I push a hole through the center, okay? And that is really gonna give you like a very perfect hole. And then I kind of squash them down with whatever's still in there. Squash them down a little bit. And then I kind of just like wiggle that and widen the hole, okay? And then that way you've got no seam on the outside and he looks more, more uniform, okay? So that's how, that's how I make a donut. You may have to flip them over and grab that hole on the back side and kind of widen that out too. Kind of smooth those edges over. But now he's a donut without a seam. So that's two ways to make a donut. If I want to ice this donut, I'm going to grab my icing color and I'm going to roll a little bit out. Are you making the tiniest donut? He's Look at you. He made the tiniest little donut. He's so <laughs> cute. So, so cute. Abbott's so fun to sculpt with. He always makes like the most interesting little things. He's always been my sculptor since he was a tiny guy. We used to sit and play with Play-Doh for hours and hours and hours. I bet there are some moms and dads out there relying heavily on Play-Doh these days. <laughs> We love Play-Doh. We used to have the... You're getting some potato requests. <laughs> some potato <laughs> requests. He just, him, he just made an appearance. Oh my gosh. Not too long ago. Do you remember when we used to use the barber chair with the, the <laughs> crazy know. hair? Um, did anybody have... It was... What was it called? The fuzzy pumper. Oh, yeah. Fuzzy pumper uh, Play-Doh guy where we, you put the Play-Doh in and then you pump up the barber chair, spin him, and his hair comes out. We used to play with that all the time. All right, so with this icing again, I'm doing the same thing I did with my little cakes. I'm just making it a little bit bigger than my donut. And I'm just gonna kinda seal them down. And you see it covered up his little donut hole, but we're gonna fix that. We're gonna go right back in with whatever we use to make the hole, and we're just gonna poke the hole back through. All right, and we're gonna widen him back out. And there you have it. We have our little donut. Now, if it made him the donut hole too small, you can just 
continue to wiggle and widen that back out and kind of use your finger as a tool to kind of make it back to the shape you liked. But now we have the cutest little donut and we're going to make some sprinkles. So sprinkles are fun and easy. You can take, let's make some yellow sprinkles. You can take just a little bit of the clay and you're going to make a teeny tiny coil. So we're going to roll that into a coil. I think we're going to see a lot of potatoes today. Potatoes. Really, a lot of people are making potatoes out Guys, there. Guys, a, a sweet potato. I'm, I need to make a yam. A little sweet potato. <laughs> All right, so we're rolling this tiny little coil out. I can't wait to see the potatoes, guys. I hope that I hope that you tag potato the great in it. Hashtag start with potato. <laughs> All right. So make a really thin little little coil. And if maybe your coil is a little a little gigantosaurus, you can just thin them down. You could even take half of it off. But I like to just roll out a really thin little coil and take my little knife. You can use a butter knife or whatever and just chop, chop that piece off. Boom. Oh, you went right. It's like cornhole. You went right down there. There's a little sprinkle. These are big chunky sprinkles. These are just super, super fun. Just roll him up and put him, lay him on there. Now with Model Magic, you kind of have to squish it on there so it creates a bond. You kind of squish him down on there. I mean, these might be the hugest sprinkles ever, but. It looks more like macaroni and cheese on the top of my donut than sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> You just lay your little sprinkles on there. And if you don't like them, you've got time to whip them off real quick, take them off and redo them. Sometimes they stick together, they'll stick to it and you won't be able to get them off as well. But if you move pretty quickly, you still can. So there's some little sprinkles and then maybe I go back in with some purple and I'll show you how to do teeny tiny little polka dot sprinkles too. Just make teeny tiny little balls and then pop them on there. Boop. And you can do them as large or as small as you like. But there we go. And our little donut guy is almost complete. I need to give him a face. Happy or sad, Ab? Oh, happy. Happy? He's a happy donut? Okay. I must like these colors together because these are about the same colors as my sea turtle oh, that I did the other day, too. <laughs> your theme. It's like your favorite colors. colors. I know. Turquoise and turquoise, and, turquoise and yellow I like. Turquoise and pink. Turquoise and coral are my favorites. All right, so that's our macaroni and cheese uh, looking donut here. <laughs> Carlene says there's a macaroni and cheese top bagels are a thing. Oh, I've that sounds seen... so good. That's like carb <laughs> on carb. Oh, yeah, put that in a big bag. Yeah. Bag. All right, so I'm going to give him a little scooped out happy face. Happy smile. Little eyes. Little eyes. And a little piece of black clay to give him some little eyeballs. And then if, you know, do you want to take your toothpick or whatever and push that back down in there, give him his little eyeballs, you can do that too. But yay, that's the little, that's the happy donut man. And he goes with the happy, with the happy cake family. <laughs> Except for the sad guy on the bottom. He's not, you know, he's sad cake man.
With a potato. They can't all be. Unless you do put potato. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that's it, guys. That's how you make some fun little creative clay sweet treats. We hope you guys have enjoyed making these with us. Um, we continue to enjoy doing this with you and we super appreciate your generosity. Um, the ways you can continue to help donate while our studio is closed is at Tabitha-McClung on Venmo. So that's Tabitha-McClung on Venmo, or you can do paypal.me slash mcharpermanor. Um, we appreciate you guys doing that. We're excited to be able to continue offering content through week six for you. We are gonna do um, some really fun things next week. Next week we have Monday, an acrylic painting on canvas with a bunny and a chick. It'll be um, a bunny's face with a little chick stacked on top of them. Super cute. Uh, Tuesday, we're gonna make cardboard box cakes. I don't, I don't know what's up, but maybe I have a theme of sweets here. Maybe, maybe <laughs> we've been on social distancing for too long because I have a lot of uh, cake themes going on for you guys. But Tuesday, we're gonna make cardboard box cakes. So make sure you guys are hanging on to those uh, Amazon boxes or things that you're getting in the mail. We want. You know, just like a little medium-sized box. You could do a two-tiered cake, whatever you like, but just some small to medium-sized boxes to do that with. Um, Wednesday, watercolor monsters. We're going to make some, um, we're going to use the watercolor, but we're going to blow it around on the, on the watercolor paper with straws. So drinking straws are added to the supply list for that. It'll be a fun one. Um, wiggly eyes encouraged for that one for sure. Uh, Thursday, we will be making printing plates with found objects. So things like bubble wrap and uh, the corrugate inside of cardboard, hang on to some extra supplies from just the recycling bin, um, maybe some packaging supplies for that one. That's fun too. Friday, sock puppets. And we are going to um, talk to you guys about some ways to make a set for your sock puppets over the weekend. So if you have bigger boxes, maybe break those down and hang on to those because your kids will be able to paint and create a big set for their, pop, for their sock puppets for that. So we want you guys to continue the play into the weekend with that one. So Friday will be lots of fun. So we have so many fun tutorials next week as well. Um, weeks five and six, the supply list and projects are loaded on the blog. Um, again, thanks for being here. You guys, we will be back tonight, 8.30 and at nine with the project. We are so excited to hang out with the parents tonight. We hope you guys have enjoyed today and we will see you again tonight for the adults and next week for the kids on Monday. You guys keep sharing those projects with us, the hashtag made with McHarper. And we can't wait to see how these potato the great little images come out too. We are excited to give away some cool prizes for that too. So thanks for hanging with us guys. Again, Venmo is at Tabitha-McClung and PayPal.me slash McHarper Manor to donate. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Parents, we'll see you tonight. Bye, guys.